Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I'm going to do the kind of test that I wouldn't normally do for myself because I've already satisfied myself that the Sony a6300 is all the camera that I need for 99% of the time. And on those occasions when I'm doing a live event, critical short turnaround times, cannot be futzing with batteries, well, then there's this guy, the Sony FS5, which has become suddenly very, very interesting to me. Not the least of which is because Sony will be releasing a firmware update later uh, this year, in a month maybe, two months, which will allow 12-bit 422 RAW 4K recording. Really fascinating. For me on a day-to-day -day basis, again, I don't need that kind of camera. And then I got this other camera. It just arrived in the uh, mail, as these things tend to happen. And it's Sony's RX10 Mark III. Now, I've got a fuller review coming up of this guy. I've already done a couple of photographs and stills, and pretty darn interesting. But what you see here is the RX10 Mark III. This is my old Sony a6000 because it's sitting in as a placeholder for my a6300, which is filming this. But I am not mounting this today on top of the FS5 like I did last week because this is a very delicate, very delicate setup and it scares the crap out of me, frankly. I've already dropped uh, a large, expensive camera once. I don't really want to do that again. And honestly, when I had these three cameras out over in Phoenixville, again at one of my favorite theaters, the Colonial Theater, site of the uh, 1950s B-flick, uh, The Blob, Steve McQueen's uh, first starring venue. Fantastic, I love that flick. Oh, and by the way, there is a film that was released in 2009 called Alien Trespass, which is a loving homage to that genre of movie. I recommend it if you're into that kind of thing. Even if you're not into that kind of thing, you might really enjoy it. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Here's the takeaway. I took these three cameras out. I went back to the uh, Colonial Theater. I did some low light tests. I did some rolling shutter tests at the Colonial Theater, and then I also did uh, rolling shutter tests a little bit earlier, actually, in the evening, going to uh, the Colonial Theater. Actually, I was going in the opposite direction because it worked better, but uh, I was scared. I was scared that this was not going to hold up. I had images of this shoe on the FS5 just being ripped off. I had images of these two cameras flying out the window. So uh, there are some things that I didn't do quite right. Sometimes I didn't set the apertures all the same. Sometimes I was eyeballing it, but neither here nor there, because in the end, here's what you need to know. This one inch, 20 megapixel sensor in the RX10 Mark III, pretty darn good. The A6300 is awesome. And while the FS5 is better than the RX10 Mark III, in low light, it's not as good. The flip side is that you will be able to see in the footage I'm about to show you differences in combinations of sensor and codec. You'll also see differences when they are combined with different lenses. So, there's no way that I could have the same lens on the RX10 Mark III because that's a built-in, integrated, 24 to 600 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent zoom lens by Zeiss. I used my trusty Sony uh, E50 millimeter 1.8. on the 6300, so that's a $250 lens. 
on a $1,000 camera. And on the FS5, again, I used the kit lens, the 18 to 105, which is a very nice lens and does the business, but you'll see differences. So let's take a look. All right. You see any differences without pausing? I don't. We definitely need more cowbell. What I did is I had a tripod with two legs on the floor, the third leg on the seat of the car, and of course that's terrible. I did have a suction cup mount, but there's no way that was going to hold all three of these cameras really well. So I figured I'd just look at the bounce. Sorry about that. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. I think what's really interesting here is that the RX-10 Mark III is about the same as the other two. And uh, hey, rolling shutter is rolling shutter. When you're going this fast and it's this extreme, I don't think there's that much that you can do about it. Oh, I thought it would be really great to have sci-fi 50s music as a soundtrack to this segment, but forget it. And instead, let's focus on the differences that you can see here with the codec. You've got the XAVC-L in the FS5, the XAVC-S in the 6300, and you're only running at 50 megabits per second rather than 100 megabits per second with a much smaller sensor on the RX-10 Mark III, and in this case, it really shows. Now, on the other hand, at ISO 6400, all three are pretty darn usable, but wow, the 6300, <laughs> it's great. When you switch to 12800, now you really see differences. And again, the 6300 is much better than the other two, to the naked eye, at least as far as I'm concerned. And you'll have to forgive me if I didn't get the color balancing quite right. Sometimes I didn't get the f-stop quite right. What's really interesting here is that the bus was going slowly enough so that the FS5's superiority in rolling shutter is actually visible. And yeah, you can actually see that the 6300 has slightly more rolling shutter than the FS5 or the RX-10 Mark III for that matter. Isn't that interesting? At 25,600, man, the 6300 is impressive. And it looks like the FS5 is about one stop better in low light than the RX-10 Mark III. Now, look, none of these are to be sneezed at. And again, the RX-10 is packing a lot of punch for the money. But with that being said, ah, I love that 6300. So that was pretty interesting, right? The car going by early uh, in the clips was a great instance of seeing how the combination of low light performance and codec affects the final image. Looking at the bus coming back in the opposite direction, again, an opportunity to see how the codecs and the sensors perform in low light, but there was a difference the FS5 actually handled rolling shutter better. Flip side is when we were going by the picket fences, pff, did you see a difference? I didn't see a difference. And the interesting thing is that even when I tried to apply rolling shutter correction in Final Cut Pro 10, I couldn't find any. It didn't seem to make a difference at all. All of which says to me, look, 
if you need low light performance, the best low light cameras in the Sony lineup right now are the A6300, the A7R2, and the A7S2. That's just the way it is. If rolling shutter is a big issue for you, well, you need to get a camera with a global shutter. I think that's the beginning and end of it. But here's the other point. We had to pixel peep. We had to freeze frame to find any of these differences. We didn't need to freeze frame or pixel peep to see differences in lens quality. Man, primes are where it's at for me. On the other hand, as I've said now uh, a number of times, when you're doing live events, zoom lenses are where it's at. And the 18 to 105 on the FS5 really did the business. But this 24 to 600 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent zoom lens integrated in the RX10 Mark III is nothing to sneeze at. I've got a lot more coming on that one. You know where I'm going, right? The really big news is no news at all. There were more differences in the imagery because of my ineptitude. Really, I plead that I was quite nervous having these cameras all mounted into one rig than anything else. But yeah, of course, it's the people, or in this case, the person. So that's it. There's a lot more coming. These three cameras are interesting. I really feel that I'm beginning to get a sense of the entire thing that's called Sony Corporation. It's very much like the three blind men and the elephant. If you touch enough pieces of something, you begin to understand what it truly is. What an awesome start. Anyway, I'm Hugh Brownstone, Three Blind Men and an Elephant. See you next time. If you like what you've seen, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, go out and shoot and have fun.